right. So I want to know real quick in one sentence. I'm gonna go around. What's your inspiration for playing music? My inspiration for playing music is the antagonist movement because they are promoting art in New York City. And if you want to make art, you have to be somebody. And we're not somebody. We're nobody. But we still make our art and we still do it here. And I wish we could do it somewhere bigger, but we do it here because they'll have us and nobody else Great will. Great run on sentence. Out because I got the clout <laughs> shout. Oh, before I turn the party out. The music that we make and the lyrics I write. Go hand to hand with Ethan's mood swings. So I won't stutter. Put, put, put. Uh, to the rock and roll, man. Oh, yeah. No, I watch a lot of television. Yeah. All right, fair enough. You need it's a lot either of I do that or I stick that knife in somebody. Yeah. About things that make you get weary. Don't hear me, just hear me. And if I don't play drums, I use the knife and I use the knife. I, like it. I think that the Thursday night art show. Um, is really about cre is really about uh, being open. It's not such a judgmental thing in a way. It's really about allowing people to feel like they can be creative and kind of stimulating that. And the different types of shows that we have reflect that. We have people that are schooled artists. We have people that are making their first pieces of art. And um, over the year plus that we've been doing it, I've really enjoyed seeing the energy that people put into it. And, um, Sometimes the people who are less artistic, you know, like do really cool things and they, um, they kind of give it the love and the, um, the intangibles that make it a lot more interesting than somebody who might be schooled and have just like a kind of like blase attitude about what they do. Jason Gardner, J-A-S-O-N, G-A-R-D-N-E-R. Okay, Jason, uh, what are you doing here tonight? Showing my work. It's photographs of uh, East Harlem and Cuba. Yeah. You spent a lot of time in both those places? I have. I spent, last summer I went up there at least twice a week up to East Harlem in New York, and Cuba I spent a month there last year. And I never, you know, explored East Harlem. It's a very famous neighborhood, and I wanted to check it out. So you find a lot of animosity from going up there? Some. I mean, at first they didn't know who I was. They thought I was a narc. They thought, you know, I was just some white guy, you know. But as you get to hang out with them a little bit and real and just show them the work that you've done, and then go back over and over, so you're not a one horse, you know, one trick horse, you're not some tourist, then uh, you know they warm up to you a little bit. Amazing. For a new artist like myself trying to break in, everyone always is curious about what you've done before, what you've, where have you shown before, what work have you done? You know, I want to see success before I take a chance on you. And these sort of things that you guys are running allows that you know, new emerging artists to, to have something more on their, their resume. Um, I think it, it's just like anything else when you're trying to break in an industry, but even more so. You have to have experience to get experience. How do you get experience? You have experience. It's a catch-22. Hey. Hey. It's the same old thing as yesterday. You have to pick the day that I haven't showered in two days to put a camera in my face. You're a little antagonist homeless girl. Not for long, until tomorrow. Yeah. I go down, yeah. Down, down. Downstairs. Mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> Break the wall. <laughs> All right, my name is Jason Bogue, B is in boy, O O G. And uh, how'd you find out about the readings tonight? I was actually, I, I live 13th or uh, 17th and 3rd, and uh, I just was walking down the street and uh, looking for stuff. And anytime I see a bar that's kind of down in the street like this, I go and check it out. And I checked it out, and there's a little poster in the door. There we were, and everything was going just fine until that winter. Well, I mean, if you're not in New York, there's a smokiness to the dark underground bars, and I, I just kind of dig that. Do you fancy yourself a writer? I do. I do. I, I like to write. I've always been writing. Um, not much of it has got like seen the light of day, but I mean, yeah, I, I like to write. It's what kind of keeps me going. She comes over all the time, and I'm getting it on like serious for the first time in my entire life. Cause like, there's nobody there to stop me, and my alcoholic engineering roommates—they they just laugh. They're like, "Hey, yeah, you go." 
I noticed tonight you didn't read from the paper. You just uh, seemed like you did it off the top of your head. Yeah. Was that? It's pretty accurate, right? Yeah. It's it's actually a story that I I tell every once in a while when I'm when I'm in a bar with some friends, and uh, so I've told various forms of it before, but. Tonight he brought up the incest thing, and, and it just kind of struck a chord with me, and so I kind of put it a, a new way, I guess. So oh, I think it's, I think you did a good job, though. Well, thank you. In to get it to turn on, and so I'm trying to do that, and she's screaming, "Fuck, fuck!" and running around in circles as much as you could in this little room. I get the light on, and there are about 50 bees. I kid you not, 50 bees laying on top of my bed. <laughs> Well, I'm just uh, glad that I found everybody here, and uh, this city's turned out to be everything I thought it was. It really did. It's nice that uh, people come up to me and thank me for um, DJing their party when I'm one of the people that kind of came up with the concept and created it. And it's nice that everyone feels like it's theirs to that point. And um, so I, f I feel that it's it's cool because it I feel proud of being a part of it and I also feel um, the fact that it can just exist like I don't necessarily need to be there it's something that has its own life I'm the D to the antagonist I'm here cuz I persist to influence you the ways of the unknown I'm here cuz I'm taking my throne I make you create I make you masturbate I'm so good looking it's your fate to love me, to thrive in my motherfucking job. Where you at, Brian MC? You're here to let other people read, but you got nothing in between your head. You gotta look at me before you're dead. What, Brian? Wearing those glasses, thinking you're from some other classes. You went to school, maybe, in Seattle, but your motherfucking cattle, you got nothing original. Where you at? You might as well be south selling pizzas on the corner. There's no motherfucking honor. Uh, what? My name is motherfucking the antagonist. Uh, my name is what? My name I, is. I can't talk. Where you at, MC? You bought a full coat. Uh, my name is what? My name is. I got a full head of hair, Brian. What? My name is. Uh, my name is. I love you, brother. Ouch. What? You want to challenge me to rap? You come down to black and white on Sundays. You're done. I even done. J-A-Y, J-A-Y-A, Gupta, G-U-P-T-A. I have had more than three drinks tonight, and I'm a lightweight, so that's why I couldn't spell my name at first. Well, you know, I don't go out much anymore because I am now the starving artist. That's cool. My work is basically based on the composition. That's all I think about. Um, I don't think of the emotion that emotes or anything else. I just think that hopefully I can make a piece because I've, I've done art all of my life. Hopefully I can make a piece that is, and I've also done science and math because my whole entire family is scientifically, scientifically and mathematically balanced. They're all engineers. I I do art, so I hope that I can make composition that's mathematically. If you could graph it out mathematically, it would be balanced if you cut it in half. If you looked at it as a whole, if you cut it in a diagonal, in any viewpoint that you cut it at, I try and make it so it's like absolutely mathematically balanced through colors and composition and shape. How would you describe antagonism as a, as a glass of water? Antagonism as a glass of water? But I think they're both intrinsic. They both do what they do. Okay. Julia Durgi, uh, J U L A A, D is in David, D U R G E E. When I was young, I had to drew girls and fashion figures and then uh, throw out. Um, I had design training, formal design training, but I noticed that the best part of design was drawing it. Not the making, not the planning, not the sewing, cutting, it was the drawing. So hence, the fashion, the drawing fashion part was my favorite. 
and then sense of humor. Because I feel, I hate it, hate it when people draw a fashion figure and they don't have a face. Yeah. It's like, if they don't have a face, then they don't have a personality and they can't have a sense of humor. Would, would you ever commit a crime for art? Ah, in high school, Jay and I went to high school together. In fact, for all you viewers. Um, and there was a, a mural going on by this shitty local artist who did like these terrible cheesy blue you know when artists don't mix enough colors they don't know how to mix colors so they take they take colors right from the paint we call that tube painting it's very bad and she would do like cheesy tube painting paintings and so one day I was like in high school late at night because we were good kids and we were involved with extracurricular activities and except I saw this mural half done and I was like I have to do something this is terrible save my school so I took all um, the paints and I just did my own like little thing in a corner but and I, and I initialed it, and of course, the day later, I get a phone call from the superintendent and being like, "We know you did it." But then the artist wants you to help. A n d r e w b e r e n d s. For me, the main thing I would say is the amount of time you spend with your subject. You know, as much of yourself that you invest in it, the more you're going to get back. And when I was looking at the pictures, sometimes. And in those images that really work, you can't necessarily describe technically why it works, but there's, it sounds cheesy, but it's like there's some magic moment. There's some magic thing that's coming through. If you say, I don't know if I have an answer to every fucking question, why are we interviewing you? That would be a question for you. <laughs> I'll go places because like I want to make the movie about it or I want to take the pictures of it. Um, I push myself to do things largely out of my ego so that I can come back and say, look what I did, look at this experience that I had, look at where I've been. And maybe that's shallow, but it's also what drives me to be engaged in life and to, to do stuff. I think I have a certain vision, a certain personality. Um, that's about the extent of it. It's just a good sound. I, maybe that sounds arrogant, but that's the most honest it answer does, to your question. It actually sounds like you have a pretty big ego. I do. Big and fragile. As far as I know, the goal of the Antagonist Movement is to create and to find, or to create a lifestyle for the individual that supports their their endeavors and their desires. It's, we kind of... Um, cultivate each other's ideas and um, make, hopefully, like, create a platform that someone would be able to make a lifestyle out of the things that they're interested in as opposed to just working for somebody else. But you would like to make a full-time living as a photographer someday? I pretty much am. Uh, I freelance and I am in the process of getting my own work. I send my book to magazines. Commercially, I do food photography. Totally different from what I'm showing this evening. Sweet, sweet. So I send my stuff up to like gourmet and food and wine. What are you showing this evening? I'm showing uh, work from New Mexico. Uh, it's about four years old, but. Um, do you remember just, what your inspiration was for that? My inspiration was uh, just to kind of be out there on my own and just experience the spirituality and color and life of New Mexico and. Throw some underwear in there, and you were... the, the texture and light and uh, design of kind of the wreckage and the beauty and the decrepit is. I love that shit. I love that shit. What kind of inspired me to photograph it? Tai 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 da tai da, um, and uh, 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 and then uh, 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 uh and uh, with uh, uh, but um. And, uh... And, uh... And, uh... Um... I want to know what you think about the art scene in New York now and where it's going in the future. From what I see, I think a lot of it's pretty lame. I mean, I go to galleries very often. I'm always curious to see what's out there and what people choose to show and what people want to be shown. And I think a lot of it is BS because it's poor work. I think it... You know, when I go to galleries and I talk to the artists and I see 
what they want to talk. It's 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 coming from nothing and just it's I find a lot of it poor work and derived from emptiness. What separates your work from poor work? I don't know. I find my work interesting. You don't need to necessarily talk to me to find out what my work is about, or you don't have to like my work because you talk to me. It's I hope my work speaks on its own and. Uh, Kind of, for example, this work wants to make you go to New Mexico or go to a junkyard or mm. look at, you know, go to a beautiful, go to a back room of some bar and find something beautiful. Pan around the room like this. You know, like there's beauty in all of this. If you if there's you beauty find it, in this old wooden door. Believe it or door. not. Believe it or not. The old wooden door that holds the beer. There's beauty in that. I think there is. I agree. Come back. Don't get lost in the beauty. It's get back here. Don't get lost in the beauty. Air. I want some of that air. Yeah, it feels good. Should we feels continue good. the interview in the closet? You have to be passionate about something. Sometimes you got to break rules. And if you're not hurting anyone and you're creating art and creating inner peace or beauty or satisfaction, then it's worth it. Keep going. Keep don't have confidence in yourself, not in your work. Um, keep keep pursuing the dream because if if you don't stop, if you stop pursuing it, then what are you? I mean, you just need to find passion yourself. Find something you're passionate about. Go photograph something you're passionate about. If you, you know, if you love shopping, shoot your shoes. If you love people, shoot your friends. Just find something that you're passionate about, and you'll find beauty in that. I want to tear. I want to tear. This is done. Oh, settle down.